You know, sometimes I try to step back and look at myself as an individual and just not as president of Coppin State University. It's hard to make that division. Sometimes it's hard to decipher who's thinking the thoughts. Is it the president or is it the person who was uh, my mother and father's child? And the events of the past weekend the events in Orlando a year ago, the events in Ferguson, the events in Florida, in Paris, I could go on, London, I could go on and on and on and on and on about disturbing occurrences, man's inhumanity to man. Now, personally, I'm going to step out of the president's hat. As a person of faith, all I can do is pray. But then I've got to step back into being leader of this campus and being president. This is something we're going to have to grapple with as a community of scholars, as an academic community. And our guest here today, Dr. Smith, there was an incident on your campus, College Park, that your president, I can tell you, he's grieving deeply. And the president of Bowie, grieving deeply. So like I said, there's no handbook for this kind of thing. And as many leadership academies that I attended, and I attended just about everyone out there for you know about a decade, nobody has clear answers about these sorts of things. No one gives you advice when what, is ha what we think is happening is not only tragic, but sudden and just totally unpredictable. So, fortunately, we are named after Fanny Jackson Coppin. And for our guest, she was the second African-American woman to receive a bachelor's degree in the United States, the very first to be a school principal, and the first woman, black, white, or any color, to be a superintendent of a school system. So she is an educational pioneer. So I looked to her writings, and I can always find something in this reminiscences of school life and hints on teaching. No matter what topic I'm thinking about, if I just step away and read this book, I always find something meaningful for the moment. And there's a paragraph on page 18 that reads, in the year of 1863, a very bitter feeling was exhibited against the colored people of the country because they were held responsible for the war. The riots in New York especially gave evidence to this ill feeling. It was that year that the faculty put me to teaching. So as much as we think, because it's happening to us and it's visceral, as much as we think this is new, it is not. We have the writings of our namesake talking about living through similar times and guess what, she was in the 19th century. I'm sure what happened this past weekend, similar incidents were much more frequent in those days, but she never ever veered away from her love of education 
educating herself and educating others and doing what it's appropriate for her to do and appropriate for us to do, being named after her, is making education as inclusive as possible, regardless of whether people think who you are serving deserve education or not. And that's what we have to do. We have to continue the legacy of Fanny Jackson Coffin. We know that not everybody is going to agree. We know there's some people who are downright violent, ugly, hold hatred in their heart. And you know what? They existed in 1860s. They exist today. That does not stop us from providing the best education we can to everyone that walks through this door, just as she did.